channel. Recently we launched a new series playlist called Cool Cars Up Close where we showcase classics, uh, sports cars, etc. Today we are going to feature the 2017 Chevrolet Corvette. In 2017 the Corvette came in three basic models, Stingray, Grand Sport, and Z06. This particular vet is a Z51 coupe. It's considered to be at the top of the performance spectrum for the Stingray model. The Z51 performance package is roughly a $5,000 increase. It includes larger brakes with slotted rotors, Michelin run flat summer tires, bigger rear spoiler, performance exhaust adding roughly 5 horsepower and 5 pound-feet of torque, electronic limited slip differential, stiffer springs and shocks, and larger sway bars. For vehicle specs, the car weighs in are roughly at 3,350 pounds. Fuel tank is 18 and a half gallons. You always want to use 93 octane gas. The engine is a small block 6.2 liter 376 cubic inch engine putting out roughly 460 horsepower at 6,000 rpm and 465 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 rpm. The transmission on this particular vehicle is an 8-speed with paddle shift. When I go out on a trip uh, the numbers I usually see are anywhere between 25 and 30. That includes local driving and maybe a rip down the freeway. 0 to 60 at 3.7 seconds and for the quarter mile it, it is running right around 11.9 so a sub 12 second run. So next up is vehicle options and features. The sales team at Champion Chevrolet spec this car out for the showroom floor. They are the ones that added the two center stripes. This was done at a local shop. So another feature on this car is the battery protection package. And, and all that amounts to is a battery tender that is electrically hooked up into the wiring. What I did in addition to that is I put in a backup system of my own, and that's what this cord is. This was a dealer added option and it's got the Stingray Cross logo. The options uh, continue with the custom red calipers, the Z51 satin black wheels with the red stripe. That was a $1,500 option. That is not part of the Z51 package. Here we have the carbon flash badge option. Stingray door sill plates and red stitching. Makes for a nice accent with the black. This underhood liner is an option. This was put on by the dealer. Removable top. And we're going to show you how this works. You basically pop that point there, come up here, pull these two levers out. The interior of this is a 3LT package. The 3LT builds on what starts with a 1LT and then a 2LT. And basically the difference between say a 2LT and a 3LT, I've, I've narrowed it down to three things. One is the Napa leather inserts with the seats, the suede upper trim package, and the navigation.
Now we're going to talk about a couple of other items. One is bad, and then the last item is ugly. The heated steering wheel is missing in action. You know, this is a 3LT package, and when somebody orders a 3LT, it, it's they want their creature features. And last fall I was driving around and it was cold out. I went and turned the heated steering wheel on and I couldn't find it. Turns out it doesn't exist. And I was over here about this angle and I, I looked at the side up here and noticed that a light color was coming through the black. And when I realized that right along in here, the paint was missing and showing the base color, which was a light gray or even possibly a white. I went to the dealer and showed them, thinking that this would be a no-brainer, they would cover it under warranty. Well, they had no idea what was going on, so that raised a red flag. So they called GM and got talking to the design engineer in charge of the interior. But what we found out was the engineer responded to the dealer by saying, oh yeah, that's uh, I've seen the hundreds of those. And what happened was somebody used the wrong cleaner. There goes another red flag. And I'm like, what, what the heck is going on here? So uh, we ended up resolving the problem by me paying out of pocket to have this completely sanded down and repainted. As it was the paint used on the original hatch was a water-based paint and I don't believe it had any clear coat because the paint uh, did come off. Now the dealer in the paint shop was arguing that it was a short shot of paint. I really don't know and at this point I don't care. What came out of the engineer is what concerns me and what the message that I want to get out to all C7 owners and that is do not wash this with anything other than water and possibly a mild soap. The engineer failed on this by not specking out a coating process that can withstand typical cleaners. I was highly disappointed but I was so grateful for Champion Chevrolet to be able to come up with a process that not only fixed this but made it better. This is a urethane uh, uh, flat black and it came out absolutely beautiful. And furthermore, I believe that now I don't have to worry about any paint coming off regardless of what I use. So for years, I've, I've always been hoping I could get something like this. And uh, about three years ago, we put together Corvette budget. Well, the budget went down in flames because we decided that a new deck off the back kitchen was higher priority. So fast forward to August of 2019, I got an email from Josh over at Champion Chevrolet asking if there's anything he could do for us. I responded back with an email saying, if you can find a, a nice used Corvette in white or red metallic, low mileage, pristine condition, and a good price, we might be interested. Two days later, I got an email with Josh telling me he's got my car. And I'm thinking, what the heck did I get? Get myself into here. <laughs> Worked out a deal and the rest was history.
this transmission is a manual shift and it, you can actually do it one of two ways. You can either leave it in drive and just start shifting. I'm going to downshift, just drop to fifth, just drop to fourth, and if you leave it, it'll shift back into auto just like that. The other option is to shift down to manual, which would require you to do the paddle shift totally manually. So I'm in sixth gear right now. I'm going to drop to fifth, drop to fourth. There's fifth, there's sixth. It actually shifts out pretty quick. Uh, some guys are probably like it a little bit faster, but it's, uh, the light time's not bad. So I'm still in manual. I'm going to drop down to, there's fifth, there's fourth, we're up around 3,000 RPM. There's fifth, there's sixth. I'll shut it down before I get my ass in a... <laughs> my ass beat <laughs> and then I'll shift back to drive That's it. All three points are locked in. We're ready to go. So we got Mr. Jeff at the wheel doing a test drive. First time driving a C7. Used to have a Corvette years ago in 81. So it's been been a long time. I think the last time I drove a Corvette was probably about mid mid 80s, 84, 85 wow. when I sold it. Oh yeah, I can see the heads up display there. Yeah, isn't that cool? That's neat. I mean, it looks like it's way out there in front of you. It's out in front of the car. So I got a little mile per hour thing there, and it's out like in front of the car, the way the focus is on it. That is, that is so neat. It's three dimensional. It's nice having that. Uh, that's a display. What's the speed limit through here? so far or no? <laughs> it's good, I like it. I'll take it home. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a nice, nice feel to it. You know, putting that top down was a lot easier than I thought. Yeah. You want to put the pins in the back first and then drop the front down, pull it in, and then throw the latch. I just got the focus to lock much better, I think. Seat down lower. Try it. First about the way down. Let's push the whole thing down. It's a smoother ride, but I got I get that racing suspension on the Porsche. Yes. Yes. Black type's not too bad. Yeah, so my Porsche came with these goofy little buttons on the yeah, steering wheel for shifters, you know. When I first got the car, I was thinking, oh, I gotta get rid of those, you know, and I did a whole bunch of research on getting paddles to adapt to it, change out the steering wheel and everything. And, uh, then 
I got used to driving those little buttons and realized they're actually pretty good. steering wheel and the kerfuffle with the paint on the hatch those were issues that I considered uh, maybe not so good but uh, I want to make it clear that they are not showstoppers this car is absolutely phenomenal and if I had it to do over again I would hands down get this car without a doubt this here is a product from Amsoil it's called Miracle Wash and is a waterless wash and wax product. This is what we use for conditioning the seats. It's called Oakwood leather conditioner. This here is a polymer uh, detailing wash and wax. And I probably use this more than anything. It's by BioClean. This is a all around cleaner. This product here is a ammonia free uh, uh, liquid for cleaning glass. There's not a gallon of gasoline that goes through this car without being treated. And this is the product that I use for all of my gasoline engines. We don't like using towels for fear of creating surface scratches, so a high, high power blower uh, is much preferred, especially for the wheels. So that's about it from here. I'd like to request that you uh, if you like our videos, you'll uh, subscribe and hit the like. We're trying to grow our subscriber base, and we'd sure appreciate it if you uh, would do that. So you guys take care, and uh, we'll see you soon.